Hi, welcome to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. This is where you can find out about all things tech, entrepreneurship, innovation, and manufacturing. And there's a ton of awesome things going on in Hawaii. And my guest today is one of those people that are doing half of them. <laughs> <laughs> so my awesome guest today is Ignacio Fleischauer. Is that how you, I didn't ask you how you pronounce yes. your last name, Fleischauer. He's founder and chef of Pono Aina Catering, as well as a founder of Harvest Stand. And Harvest Stand is an interesting, it's like a new online farmer's marketplace. And you started it to solve a problem. Yeah. So maybe we can go into um, what that problem is. I think we have a picture of what you wanted to talk, talk about. Sure. Um, initially, it was about sourcing food. I'm a chef. Uh, we source food from smaller farms mm -hmm. uh, or hunting or fishermen. Uh, and we're close in a relationship. Our company is Pono Aina Catering. Mm -hmm. And our model is that it's fresh from the land, fresh from the sea, local. And um, what we discovered is that sometimes a smaller guy, if you're working close with one guy, it may not have enough. So where mm -hmm. would I find Love that it. same product, the same quality? Mm -hmm. So I, this was part of that idea, but also seeing the waste that's happening in the community. and. The picture that was up was a, uh, I don't want to name, you can tell by the <laughs> colors, a big company that imports a lot of food. But I asked them, like, where does this food go yeah. if you're taking it off the shelf today? And yeah. they said some of it is going to uh, people who need it, uh, other good. nonprofits or shelters. But then I leave and go outside and I see this in, in the outside. And it's all going into the dumpster. All of it was going into the dumpster, all uh. of that food. And... You know, it's That's we painful. have 287, uh, 287,000 islanders that need food that the food bank is serving. Mm. Um, 47,000 to 48 are keiki and wow. about 46,000 are kupuna. So. Mm. That's that's a big issue. Yeah. In, but we're tossing food away. Right. Yeah. And we're, so this was where the idea for Harvest Town was one to supply um, farmers with a place to sell their product or gardeners or if it's an ant or an, uh, someone that needs help around the yard. You have mm -hmm. too many mangoes, you have too many uh, things. If you're a fisherman, you caught too many fish. Mm -hmm. or, and you can. Uh, it's about sharing and, and giving back into the community and, and keeping people uh, healthy. And then That's great. also for chefs or restaurants, they can find a place to source foods if they need it. Hmm. Uh, and also for health, if you're a regular shopper and consumer, mm -hmm. the app and the website will be featuring how and where that food was raised or brought or fished or caught mm -hmm. and hunted. And then, uh, so that was the idea why I started this. And it's kind of been a long process. So. <laughs> how long? <laughs> uh, when did you start? Gosh, about six months trying to get it oh, off That's not that long. Yeah, not maybe bad. not. <laughs> um, we have a little video, to that kind of, a short video that sh talks sure. about how kind of explains what your what your website is, harvestand.com. Um, and you're going to be marketing Harvestand pretty soon. And who's, who's it for? Like you said, the farmers? It's for your everyday user. It, essentially, think of it as an online 24-7 farmer's market huh. where you can source the food or entrepreneurs can post like their beef jerkies, their jellies, and before they go into a full market mode, they can test oh, it out on the, on the website. that's great. Like test yeah. market. Yeah. That's um, awesome. So Hi, welcome to HarvestStand.com. We are an online 24-7 farmer's market where you can share or source all your local harvest and food goodies. Imagine you or your neighbor have an extra bunch of fruits or veggies. These goodies may be sold, traded, or gifted rather than potentially sending them to the waste. Now with HarvestStand.com, you can easily post and share your goodies with the world. If you run a farm, a market, or a booth, this is a great way to get the most out of your sales. On a good day, you might have a hundred people walk by, but imagine thousands of harvesters nearby looking to source your goodies. Simply take a picture of your product, go to the site, choose to add a post, fill out the easy to use form, add the picture of your product, and share it with the world. You don't even need an account to post, and it is currently completely free. If you want access to edit your post, simply create an account and save your settings so you can keep posting with ease. Visit us at HarvestStand.com.
very cool. <laughs> um, so you said Harvest Dan is pretty much for anybody that has something that they want to sell or trade. Or Gift, trade, uh, need help with cleaning up the yard. I got too many mangoes, too many leaves. Ah. Come get a bucket of mangoes <laughs> and help me rake the yard, right? <laughs> And there's a lot of like kupunas out there that need help, and mm -hmm. maybe they have too much fruit, mm -hmm. too much food. Uh, hopefully, the bigger companies will uh, adapt the technology and post if they have extra and mm -hmm. share with the people oh, who need it. That's a great idea. Okay, and then so as a as a farmer, this helps me find customers. Do you make money? Does Harvest Dan make money, or uh, how do you? Not yet. I mean, we're <laughs> trying to figure out. Uh, what that will look like in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we're planning on releasing an app to go along with the website in six months, and, and there there'll be uh, the ability to feature items. So it'll be at the top of the list for a nominal fee. Mm -hmm. And um, with the improvements of the app and what we're trying to do, we're going to add um, different services like pickup points. Uh, you can pay for your products on the website or on the app mm -hmm. and oh, then have, have a pickup point or a delivery service. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> In six months? Yep. Holy cow. That's going to be like a full-blown service. No sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're also involved in a bunch of other products. How do you tie them all together? Like uh, So food, I guess. It's food and health mm -hmm. uh, and culture. Um, I grew up. Uh, being Native American and Sicilian grandparents and wow. so the culture around food and hunting and farming and knowing your source of food it's and important. so mm. tying all the food together I'll be releasing uh, another website uh, called Food Network Hawaii where people will share their cultural recipes wow, and so that's great. the plan is to link that with Harvestan mm -hmm. so that if uh, you find a fruit it'll also aggregate information for recipes, recipes. for that food. <gasps> I love if you that. don't know how to like, yeah, got yeah, some yeah. Opal, how do I cook that? Right? Mm -hmm. we got, so that's the idea. Yeah. And then you're a programmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? How did you? Are you? What is your background? Like uh, information management originally, and then taught okay. myself how to code and um, business. And you've always been cooking, or no? Cooking was kind <laughs> of an accident uh, a couple years ago, and then. Got more into the remembering the cultural roots. Sometimes we fall asleep and then mm. something happens and we remember like, oh, yeah, people need to eat. We don't always need technology, but everyone needs to eat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then how are we looking at where we source our food? Those things became more valuable and, and mm. really being tied in with the culture and the health aspects of what we're eating and doing to ourselves and our body as a society. Mm -hmm. So have you adopted the Hawaii culture, or is it your... Uh, your well, yeah, I went to Wainai culture. High School, and uh, I've traveled around the world, but I've learned all kinds That's of different great. cooking skills, and uh, so I've uh, worked in taro fields, we hunt here, and we share what we hunt, and mm -hmm. um, so it's tied in all the different cultures. There's so many cultures in Hawaii, That's and then mm -hmm. I also work with uh, Kokua Kalihi Valley, mm -hmm. um, and I'm the chef over there uh, on Thursdays, and uh, it's a good relationship where we trade hours and we do different things. And um, so, keeping I guess mostly it's keeping that culture with Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, the best food, the best medicine is the food that grows in your backyard, and, mm. and that's what the goal is. Wow, that's another project on top of everything. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break. But we will be right back. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and my guest today is Ignacio Fleisauer, founder of Harvestan. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And of course, you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, uh, uh, actors, of course. 
And we don't only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Comedy. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And we are talking today to Ignacio Fleischauer, founder of Harvestand, who is, this is an online platform, like a farmer's market, for anybody that wants to put up anything. And it sounds like you're, you're an entrepreneur slash chef slash programmer at heart. What, what have been your biggest, what has been your biggest challenge? Uh starting Gosh. all these different time and money ventures. i suppose it's <laughs> not enough time in the day <laughs> not enough time in the day uh not getting enough sleep and um but i don't know if it's challenges i mean i, I guess I, I rise to challenges and i like challenges so i'm always trying to figure out how to do something better and faster and how to improve what we've got going on in the world. that's just sounds like straight entrepreneur <laughs> talk <laughs> which is good so you've been, you've traveled all over the place, and you come back to Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii is home. I thought I would live somewhere else before, but yeah, yeah Hawaii is home. It's always calling. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's awesome. What is what is the biggest benefit to being in Hawaii? You think? Um, I think the tight the tight community and feel of Hawaii and um, how people adopt each other's cultures and share and. Uh, yeah, just from traveling around the world, I've always felt that Hawaii was like a healing place. That hmm. uh, so it's important for me to stay connected to that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. So, what's what's next? What's next on your plate? Mm -hmm. At least for Harvest Stand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a list? <laughs> uh, the farm, the apps, and the, you had mentioned an app for farmers specifically. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I'm working on an app that will be working with the website mm -hmm. and uh, uh, specifically for farmers and to help farmers manage their business. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's new requirements coming in, into effect and they'll be required to, to say where the seeds came from, um, or when it was planted. or um, So what I'm trying to do with the app is make it so that when people, if you're going to buy something, mm -hmm. I'm, as a chef or even as a consumer, mm -hmm. I want to know when it was planted, mm. how long it took to get to market or to my table. Mm. Um, and even where the seeds came from. The cost, from. maybe, um, yeah, where the seeds came from, that's important. Uh, are they GMO? Are they, how was it grown? Was it grown with love? Was it grown with mm. pesticides? pesticides. And, and so, mm. what kind of fertilizer? Those things are important to consumers, not just mm -hmm. for peace of mind, but also for our health. So. But they're going to be required to report that out? Yeah. To so who? To the who? entities that be. Uh, <laughs> who are going to require these things. The problem with that is that, uh, that's great if you're pushing that on the bigger corporations, but the mm -hmm. smaller guys yeah. are working every day in the field. And I, I farmed, I, I know what it's like to grow, even to manage a garden, you know, in the backyard. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. It's it's a lot of work and um, a lot of being in the sun and at the end of the day to have to come back and fill out the paperwork. It's, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Will it get done? We don't know. But <laughs> hopefully with the app, you can do everything from the phone, just punch it in, make it easy to so use. So like while you're out there working. While you're working, you can plant, put your GPS coordinates and everything there. Oh. Um, so it'll show exactly where it was grown and mm -hmm. you as a consumer can have a relationship with that farmer mm -hmm. and that plant, mm -hmm. which is important. Wow, that's great. I'm sure that's, that's something that people are going to need soon. Do you know when these regulations go into effect? Uh, I'm not sure, but I can find out and let you know. Yeah. Soon? Yeah. Very good. And where can we find out more info about Harvestand? Uh, Harvestand.com, um, or you can email us at admin at Harvestand.com. And you guys have a Facebook page? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> I'm still trying to put my team together. Instagram? And Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. So. Are you yeah. hiring anybody? Uh, soon. Yeah? yeah? Who are you looking for? 
uh, looking for people who have a little bit of tech background, sales and marketing, mm -hmm. um, so that kind of, anyone is trainable, I always think so. It's <laughs> That's true. Yeah. A good so person, looking for good people. Yeah, people that have good heart and believe in what we're doing and, um, yeah, willing to be entrepreneurs and work mm -hmm. a, a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wear a lot of hats. Yeah. That's like true. most companies and startups. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And I wanted to let everybody know, tomorrow is Wet Wear Wednesday. I'm going to be announcing it, but I just want to let people know that Ignacio is going to be our program at Wet Wear Wednesday, and we're focusing on food manufacturers and how tech is kind of building itself into the food industry to help, help things move faster, better, be more productive, bring customers. So, so he'll be there if you want to hear more about Ignacio. Come to Wet Wear Wednesday. It's going to be tomorrow, 6 to 8 at Dave & Buster's. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> so thank you so much thank you. for being with me today. It was very interesting. Good luck with Harvest and all the other apps. Thank you. Thanks for having Get me. Get some Pleasure. sleep, too. <laughs> so we'll be right back with High Growth with HTDC, and we are on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island. I work in the ER there. But on Tuesday afternoons, I get to come and spend 45 minutes to an hour with Jay Fidel and the Think Tech staff. They're terrific professionals. They help us to bring some of the leading cutting edge topics here across our state to you. So you can join us at our show on healthcare in Hawaii to talk with leaders from across all the spectrum of health in our state. Or you can join us for any other show where we talk about economic development or tourism or some really eclectic programs too. So really, we'd love to see you here on our show. Thanks for joining us and thanks for supporting us. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I host Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. And I do this because I care about science literacy in Hawaii. I want to spread the understanding that science is a vital and interesting part of everyone's life. I want to make sure the broadest possible spectrum of people understand the beauty and the value of science and realize that science plays out each and every day of their lives. I want you to understand that science is fun. So we bring on to this show each week guests who are scientists, from astronomers to zoologists, and we talk about what they do and how they do it. But most importantly, we talk about why you should care about their work, why you should see that their work has value and impact on your life. So I hope you'll join us Fridays, 1 p.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. You can watch us via live stream. You can watch us uh, recorded on Olelo. And you can see us uh, each week. We hope you'll join us. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week, we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Aloha, my name is PJ and I'm the host of Hawaii Sports Update. I am very interested in local sports and that's why I host the Hawaii Sports Update show. 
I bring in guests from Hawaii, I bring in guests from UH, I bring in guests from the community, I bring in big names, I bring in small names, I bring in all names that are community related and doing positive things, sports related in the community. Come join me every Tuesday at 1 p.m. here on Hawaii Sports Update. You can also join me on my golf tournament, the first annual PJ Sports Radio Show Golf Tournament. It's going to be held at Coral Creek. For any information, go to Think Tech Hawaii INC and friend us. The PayPal and a summary of the event will be right there available for you. And don't forget to tweet us. Ted Ralston, folks, host of our show at Think Tech Hawaii called Where the Road Leads, where we talk about technology influencing the future of Hawaii. Technology, of course, is the art of solving problems. We always bring in interesting and informed guests who can see from different perspectives and different points of view how that future might unfold and how technology can assist us in getting there. So once again, join us 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Fridays. Uh, Ted Ralston, your host. And please, if you have ideas that you'd like us to address on this show or folks who you think should be on it, let us know. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. We are going to talk about a little bit that's going on this month. There's, there's a lot of things going on. Tomorrow, July 29th, is Wetware Wednesday, and we'll be having a Foodware Wednesday this month. Yay! This month, it's going to be at Dave & Buster's from 6 to 8. We're joining forces with the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and their food and beverage manufacturing group. I'm excited to see the conversation sparked at this event. There's so many ways this industry can take advantage of different online tools and apps to grow their business. And we're featuring um, Ignacio, our last guest, which is going to be cool. This next week, Wednesday, August 5th, there's an all-day conference at UH JABSA Medical Education Building, room 315. OTED is going to be hosting a public forum entitled From Discoveries to Commercialization, Stem Cell Biology and Translational Medicine. And we're going to be hearing more about that next with our next couple guests. Um, but before that, Tuesday, August 18th from 5 to 7.30 at the Blue Startups headquarters. Join them for the first ever Founders Mixer. Get inspired by our two keynote speakers, Jeremiah Gro Grossman, Founder of White Hat Security and Joyce Chung, Managing Director at Garage Technology Ventures. A perfect opportunity for anyone looking to find co-founders or make new connections. Pitch your idea, startup or skill, and network with Hawaii's entrepreneurial community. So that sounds like a great event. That's going to be on the 18th. Yes, Tuesday the 18th. So, as a result of this past legislative session, HTDC will get to administrate grant funds for the Manufacturing Development Program. Hawaii manufacturers can qualify for this grant if they are purchasing equipment, building out space, or training for their workforce. If you want more information, please visit our site at htdc.org. Don't forget, if you need some small, quick small business legal advice, every other Wednesday, HTDC offers free legal guidance in partnership with the Business Law Corps. You can sign up for a 30-minute appointment at the Manoa Innovation Center. Please visit htdc.org slash legal to sign up. And lastly, also from this past legislative session, if you are a phase one, phase two, or phase three winner, HTDC offers states matching funds for up to 50% of your SBIR award. So if that's you, please contact us at sbir at htdc.org. Okay, <laughs> enough with the announcements. <laughs> So, my guests today are Dr. Sujun Lim Higby, Licensing Associate at the University of of University Office of Tech Transfer and Economic Development, or OTED. That's a mouthful, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Aaron Rose of JABSM and Biologic Hawaii. Thanks for being here. So, I know you've come to talk about this upcoming event that's next week, Wednesday. And tell us a little bit more about OTET and about the event. Yeah, so OTET, as you said, is the Office of Technology Transfer and Economic Development. As the name goes, we help the un university community commercialize technology. We help researchers bring uh, help researchers bring their inventions and discoveries from the lab to the public via commercialization. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of things that we do are. Uh, will involve patent filing and finding licensees. Mm -hmm. Great. And so is this upcoming conference going to kind of cover some of that? Or? Yeah, definitely. So 
Uh, as you know, um, the university has a lot of research in many different areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of it are early stage technology, mm -hmm. early stage research. So the, the challenge is always um, to bring early stage, to bridge early stage to commercialization. Mm -hmm. So um, the forum will uh, have a public, public discussion and a brainstorming session for, I think, four of the projects mm -hmm. and uh, sort of try to pool everyone's ideas to figure out how to move the projects forward. Oh, yeah, because that's yeah. a pretty big jump <laughs> from early research, right, yeah, to market. Yeah, you have to do it one step at a time, too, right? Yes. Oh, very good. And so, Dr. Aaron Rose, you, <laughs> you're one of the speakers. So, so she's be giving us the opportunity to uh, get out there and hopefully be a little bit of an example of a company that's uh, rapidly approaching the stage where we can uh, take investments and begin That's to actually great. grow a business in order to take advantage of our uh, intellectual property that OTED has uh, secured for us. Wow, that's great. How does how does that work? Like, what are the steps that you took? So you are a researcher at Yeah, Jackson. so I actually work uh, for Dr. Peter Hoffman at the uh, medical school, mm -hmm. and it was originally his idea to develop the uh, anti-inflammatory compound that we've mm -hmm. been working on, and he took that idea to OTED, and Sejun ran with that, contacted lawyers, uh, she said this, this looks really good, made sure there wasn't a lot of prior art out there, mm -hmm. and then said, okay, let's go ahead and begin to s secure the intellectual property so that we can protect this, and then develop it with a, with a business in the future. She also took a, a, you know, really big steps with us to encourage us. When you're a, a scientist, it's hard to uh, get excited about or even really understand how business the business, works. right? Because exactly. you're just full-on research. Exactly. It's very <laughs> easy to get the tunnel vision and work yeah, at the bench yeah, yeah, and yeah. produce results always aiming at that science or nature paper mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that becomes an exactly, engine of exactly. itself. So she, she encouraged us to uh, start the business. Uh, we've also been working with uh, um, Omar and Tarek uh, Sultan upstairs at uh, uh, Accelerate UH, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they've been a, a great help. They've educated us a lot, and, and uh, <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. So you just graduated from their cohort? We did, yeah. How was it? How was the whole experience? It was very intense. You know, the, I think the primary focus for them was about uh, preparing us to, to pitch an idea really rapidly and succinctly, but also to understand the financials behind a business and have all of your paperwork and all your uh, ducks in a row when mm -hmm. you go to ask someone to, to put down a large chunk of money to make your idea a reality. Mm -hmm. Wow, where, where are you guys at with your so research? So we, we have a, a PCT patent filing going on right now. We have put together, as you mentioned before, a uh, application for the SBIR program. We'll be doing a phase one oh, application in about a month from great. now. Great. Yeah, we have some chem chemist collaborators at Notre Dame that we'll be working with on that grant. And, of course, when we get that grant, we'll come back and, <laughs> and apply to get some good. of the matching funds from HTDC. And, Very good. And we're about to get some funds invested from the Accelerate group as well. So. Awesome. Yeah. We're very excited. You are going to be the poster child for all these programs. That's right. <laughs> We're going to bring up Biologic Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so is Biologic Hawaii a completely separate entity? And so Biologic, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. understand the whole dynamic. So Biologic licenses the technology. Exactly. From you, you yeah. From exactly. You, yeah. So when we okay. become wildly successful mm -hmm. and uh, we bring a, a new drug to, to market that uh -huh. helps millions of people and therefore we make, you know, uh, millions to billions of dollars, per, a percentage of that comes back to the university. Oh, great. So it's great. We can all work together and we all sort of, we have the same goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Same with the Accelerate group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does your timeline look like? Because I know for medical products and... Is it a drug? Yeah, it is. It's a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, We're in the early stages. So when I deliver my pitch, I, mm -hmm. I explain, yes, we have all of these rules with regards to the FDA before mm -hmm. we can go into uh, human trials, and, and it costs a lot of money. But I like to remind folks that uh, uh, just last year, a company with a similar anti-inflammatory compound was mm -hmm. purchased only about four or five years down this road that we're on for wow. $271 million. So it, it's a long road, but there are uh, turnoffs at, yeah. at various stages. It could be early exits. Exactly. Oh, 
Mm, and is the is the customer potentially one of those big pharma of pharmaceuticals? Because they have all the channels already established, mm -hmm. right? If we mm -hmm. if we go all the way, we'll have to build all of that from scratch. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not you know that's not out of the realm, but mm -hmm. it's obviously a lot uh, easier for us if we can move things to the stage where it's clear that we can get this past the FDA mm -hmm. and into human trials. And at that point, we can. Uh, uh, start to partner with or uh, uh, be bought out by a larger company. Okay, so then part of your company is focusing on the business and then is, the research is still being done. Absolutely. Is so right? our SBIR is about, uh, um, it's about taking the compound that we already have and making it better, making mm -hmm. it more mm -hmm. stable, more bioavailable, more effective, and then doing an iterative series of tests to establish that we have this more effective compound. It means that you can uh, treat with lower dosages. You have less possibilities of side effects. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And so you know this is a big problem already. Yeah. So you have a proven market that you're entering. Absolutely, absolutely. Millions of people <laughs> and, you know, it's unfortunate because they're, they're chronic diseases, inflammatory bowel diseases, mm -hmm. and it hmm. means that folks will need a treatment for, for life. Wow. Yeah. What, what has been your biggest challenge as far as this whole process of getting your, your company off the ground? I think it's, it's operating in a world where there are sets of rules and guidelines, but they're very general and very vague. Um, when, you, when you work in science, mm. you apply for grants, there's specific stages of things, exactly how you move forward. Uh, in the business world, it's a little more ethereal, and people are very secretive about the way they huh. negotiate or, you know, and so in science, when you're used to, if you have an idea and you, sh and you show that a result works, you publish it in a journal so everyone can see it. <laughs> so everybody knows. In business, <laughs> when you do something very effective, mm -hmm. you keep that to yourself because hmm. that's now a tool in your tool chest. Mm -hmm. so that's your differentiator. It's a different mindset. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. I, I like to think biologic brings a, a fresh perspective given that, that we, we embody a hybrid of those, right? We don't have to be ultra secretive. We can do a good job mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we can do it in an honest and open way. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I always end my pitches by talking about people and reminding everyone that we're going to make a lot of money, but we're going to do it by uh, helping people in the end. Very good. So are you currently fundraising? Or where yeah, are we I at? mean, we so so we finalized uh, the documentation on our C corp. We originally had started as an LLC because mm -hmm. it's very simple and easy mm -hmm. to do. But most folks, when they want to invest, they want to invest in a in C -Corp. a C corp. So we have that established now. Mm -hmm. We're finalizing our paperwork with Accelerate. They'll uh, they'll do a, a small investment in our company, and then we'll begin to approach uh, uh, larger investors and and get them excited about what we have to offer. Very exciting. Very good. Good job, Chun. <laughs> hey, it's all Aaron's work. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, um, as far as OTED goes, what has been, what is your challenge as far as bringing these early research projects yeah. to commercialization? Yeah, so um, across, so for tech transfer offices across the nation, I think in general you can see three categories. One is a technology problem. Uh, there's a lot of research that really is um, sort of the scientific discoveries of scientists that come from anywhere, you know, so it's like someone's passion to mm -hmm. figure out this problem mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's not very targeted, right? So um, you, you tend to have a wide range of research projects coming through uh, tech transfer office. So that is the challenge number one, is to weed through all that and pick the one that has the most commercialized uh, value. Mm -hmm. Now, not to say that, not to say that the other ones are not, um, you know, the other ones are good signs, but, you know, we're focusing on the commercialization part of the research project. So that's number one. And everything starts with the technology. That's mm -hmm. the foundation mm -hmm. of what we do. Now, the second problem is people. <laughs> so, so what I do... Nothing personal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> ...to uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Wednesday. And we have Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host wow. and co-chair of the uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And we have War Warren Bollmeyer today, a special guest with Hawaii Renewable Energy Alliance.
and also a member of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. In fact, he's our Renewable Energy Working Group Chair. So he, he is. Takes care he is. Of all of our... You ought to see him in song and dance, too. <laughs> <laughs> he does the musical part of the show. Uh, Sharon is more serious than that, but not much more not serious. Much more. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what do you think of this show? I mean, is this good? I think this is good. We hope it's good. We hope it attracts a lot more people than than our forum so that people can see what's going on in energy and clean energy and uh, and and call in, write in, tweet yeah, or Twitter. Yeah, we want Twitter, that. We want, uh, we want public engagement, civic engagement for everybody because that's the only way we're going to get down the road on this, right, Warren? Yeah, I think so. And it's an opportunity for guys um, like me to share a little bit of their mana'o and and uh, sometimes get the facts right. Who was that guy that said, just give me the facts, you know, start with the facts and then work from there? Oh, it was Dragnet guy, right? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack that was what I was just, a, I was just I in grade school then. I barely that. remember that. Just the facts, man. Just the man, man. <laughs> Here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy, <laughs> every Wednesday from 4 to 5. You'll see. Come back soon. Right, Sharon? Great. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to High Growth with HGDC. And we are talking with Sujin Lim Higby, Dr. Sujin Lim Higby from OTED, and Dr. Aaron Rose of Biologic Hawaii and Jamson. Thank you so much. And we were talking with Sujin about some of the challenges that OTED faces. And you're talking about how people could sometimes be the challenge. Yeah, <laughs> and it's the joy and challenge of it, right? So every day I'm uh, managing relationships be it huh. with uh, the university, with researchers, or with licensees. Or the businesses. The businesses, right. So um, I see it as relationship managing, as wow. well as expectation managing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Managing people's expectation. And mm -hmm. obviously, as, as Aaron um, said earlier, when you're in research, you don't really think about the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you come to the table with uh, different set of expectations. So mm -hmm. that is w when communication is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to um, communicate to That's researchers. Great. So Oted's know. kind of the moderator, sort of. Y yes. <laughs> well, and, and they're not just that. So when, when someone like Sejun does a good job, they're a cheerleader as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's really easy to get discouraged when you're mm -hmm. trying to learn something that has a steep learning curve while you're also working as a scientist. Mm, at the papers. same time. Yeah. And, and so I, I think that that's a huge part of what she does is being encouraging and you know, she was talking about how many different uh, uh, pieces of potential intellectual property are going over her desk. You know, that's why she is uh, a doctor, right? That's why she has her PhD. Is mm -hmm. She needs to be able to quickly look through these things and say, that one has potential, that mm -hmm. one doesn't. The one that has potential, let's go meet those people. Are those people the kind of yeah. people that I can encourage to start a business? <laughs> it's very complex, and I, I, you do a good job of it. Well, thank you, Erin. <laughs> Great, yeah, but it, it does sound like it has its challenges. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so definitely uh, you need to be able to read quickly as well. So, uh, but, well, I mentioned technology and I mentioned people. people. Now, the mm -hmm. third biggie is funding. <laughs> That's another big challenge I'm mm -hmm. sure that all the university tech transfer offices face. Mm -hmm. So we always have a budget constraint mm -hmm. and, and spin-outs always need more fu uh, investment, funding, mm -hmm. SBR funds, etc. You just have to wait till they hit it big. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know... We'll get that as <laughs> Yeah, you also need the, um, the determination to, to keep going keep going until you get it. Wow, yeah. very good. Things are... So it sounds like a lot of things are happening at OTAN. Yeah, we, we try to, yeah. Business transactions. Well, we, <laughs> that's our goal is to maximize, maximize technology coming in. Good. And maximize licensing Good. and maximize revenue. So part of this, this conference coming up next week is to actually showcase some of the potential technologies that could be commercialized or yeah. some of the research? Yes, yeah, so the upcoming event um, is what we call From Discoveries to Commercialization, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's broken in two parts. The morning session is mainly lecture by guest speakers. So these guests are, we are very honored to have these guests coming to visit us because one of them is from Stanford University, is a renowned stem cell scientist, hmm. and another one is uh, from Kyoto University, um, and both of them are founders of uh, a company called Ripple Cell 
and it, it was it was very it is very successful in Japan. So we would like to pick their brains and hopefully have them give us some advice on how to bring our research projects forward. Now, great. So they're not. I mean, they're going to talk a little bit about the technology, but it's going to be focused on how they commercialize. Yeah, so it's going to be both both yeah definitely as i mentioned technology is the foundation of it mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of science and <laughs> and we'll also talk about how to commercialize technology mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. in the second section the afternoon session it's where erin will present mm -hmm. uh, we'll feature four uh researchers ranging from very early stage to uh university spin out mm -hmm. like erin's mm -hmm. project uh, and we we plan to have have an hour presentation followed by uh, panel discussion and brainstorming on ways to commercialize the projects and hopefully we we really hope that um, audience will participate and give us more more ideas mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully that will help us bring the projects a few steps further towards the goal of commercialization great and is the idea to bring in some potentially interested businesses to industry Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Good. Yeah. What kind of companies would, would be relevant? Would this be good for this conference? So I have to say that this is, again, very early stage research um, mm -hmm. for most of our projects. Mm -hmm. um, well, with the exception of Aaron's uh, mm -hmm. company, the spin out, right? So most of them are really still thick in the lab. Still in the lab. We're still doing experiments by we, mm. I say, the researchers are still doing their experiments mm -hmm. and still gathering data and um, going through the proof of concept mm -hmm. um, stages. But it's never too early to think about how it can be commercialized, mm -hmm. if that is mm -hmm. one of your goals, mm -hmm. because the way you do things will be different. For example, do you want to go into pig studies, dog studies, or tissue mm. culture, mm. in vitro, in vivo, you know, all these kind of things Depending can... on what your application is right. for commercialization. Yeah, it huh. can help a lot if you think about it earlier in, in the process. Yeah. Well, um, and even just thinking about it, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of the folks in the audience will be uh, uh, medical doctors mm -hmm. and researchers at the medical school and from UH Manoa. And so if you, were, if you have commercialization as, as a potential endpoint in your mind, even just as a suggestion, it can shift the way you plan for the future a little mm -hmm. bit. And it, it will open them up to the idea that OTED exists here as a partner, that the Accelerate group exists as a partner, and that there is a framework built. So like I told you before, it feels a bit ethereal when you first step out into trying to mm -hmm. establish yourself mm -hmm. in the business world. Mm -hmm. And so it's very nice to have that scaffolding or runway to help mm -hmm. you uh, mm -hmm. To help you move forward. That's great, but it does sound like a mind shift mm. to just start considering that as an option. <laughs> but that's great, very exciting. Where can we find out more information about um, the conference? Yeah, so the information is all on the website. If you go to University of Hawaii Research okay. website under the events, uh -huh. you'll find it. Or you can always email OTED at O T T E D. Sorry, OTED, O-T-T-E-D, at hawaii.edu. And where can we find out more about Biologic Hawaii? Well, you know, we have a website up and running right now, but uh, probably the best source of information, especially if you're an interested investor, mm -hmm. is to uh, contact Sultan Ventures or Accelerate oh, UH, or okay. the University of Hawaii in particular. Great. You could also reach me at uh, AaronRose1 at gmail.com. And... Uh, and look forward to us celebrating our successful SBIR application in a few months. <laughs> yes, I'll be looking for that call. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for Very inviting. exciting. Good luck. And we look forward to your um, conference. Thanks for being with us here today on High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And we're on ThinkTech Hawaii.